Hey y'all, it's your girl Damo, and today I'm gonna show y'all how I bleach and pluck my closures. So the materials I use are this Diane bowl, this Diane brush, some bleaching powder. I usually use clear blue, but I use BW2 for this video, and some 40 developer. So to make sure you don't get no bleach on the hair, you want to wet it and just comb the hair backwards. You can use a spray bottle or you can just put the water directly on it just like I'm doing it. Just make sure all the hairs are going to the back. Then you want to mix your bleaching powder and your 40 developer in the bowl until it's like this thick pancake mix consistency. You will see. I don't want to say two cups of bleach and this amount of developer because you're gonna see in the video i have to keep adding as i go because i poured a little bit too much developer <laughs> because i used that big bottle and it poured way too fast but you want to make sure that it's a thick enough consistency to spread so that it's not seeping through the hair but you don't want it way too thick because then it's going to be too hard to spread if that makes sense but you'll see what i'm talking about So like I said, I'm just constantly adding powder, just trying to get that mixture a little bit thicker because when you see me shake the brush a little bit, that just means it's way too thin, it's gonna run off, and you just don't want that at all. So once I got the mixture to the consistency that I wanted, it was time to spread. And I like to use this plastic butter knife because it's just better than a brush because sometimes the bristles can go through the hair and it just can cause for the hair to be bleached. You don't want that. So you want to use a butter knife to go ahead and spread it. And as you can see, I'm being real light-handed with that. I'm not going too heavy on it. I'm not trying to move too fast. It's no rush. But what you do want to do is spread the bleach from the back to the front. Yes, it is a reason that you do it this way. Because the back knots are usually way bigger, way thicker than the front ones. They're usually smaller and thinner. So if you start at the back, those can start processing. And then you can work your way to the front. And once you see that the front ones are all processed, then you know that it's ready. So once I was done spreading the bleach all across the inside of the lace, I went ahead and placed my piece of foil right there. Um, and I just pressed down on it, not too much, just a little bit, just so those, just to make sure that bleach is pressed up against all those knots. 
and this also helps it conduct heat which will make it process faster just process more evenly in my opinion um, and then it also just helps you see those knots you can see exactly how they look like I'm showing you right here you see they still black and I did go ahead and add a little bit more bleach onto the front as you can see I didn't put the bleach on some of those knots so it does help you see it way better like this and after letting it sit for about 30 35 minutes I went ahead and rinsed it with some warm water Then I went ahead and added some moisturizing shampoo. I got this shampoo from Sally. It's actually their, you know, generic brand. It's compared to Paul Mitchell. It's real, real good, y'all, but it's just less expensive. I highly recommend. I know some people like to use blue shampoo just to balance out that orange tone. I use it sometimes, but personally, I didn't want to do it on this wig because I have those 613 highlights and I just didn't want that hair to turn blue because it doesn't need any toning so yeah condition with some ion repair conditioner y'all i love this conditioner it makes the hair so soft i got this from sally as well i will drop the link in the description 10 out of 10 always let your conditioner sit and then rinse cold not warm you always want to make sure you seal in that moisture with cold cold water So sometimes I like to pluck while the hair is dry and I use a hot comb but for this one I just decided to pluck while it was wet. This is always the easier method because you can style afterwards and it's just it really saves you time to be honest especially if you let your wigs air dry like I do. So you want to start by parting the hair down the middle. No the part does not have to be perfect yet. Yes, we do love perfect parts over here, but it doesn't have to be perfect when you just parting it with the comb because your plucking is going to do the parting for you. And you're going to see exactly what I mean by this. So to pluck, I use these Pluck Like a Pro tweezers from Designs by Diamond. They are a slanted tip. Any tweezers with a metal slanted tip would work perfectly for plucking though. Those are the what I found to be the most useful tweezers to pluck a perfect part. So I did zoom this part in because it is important to see how I pluck. So I choose one in the front and then I follow the grid line all the way back. I use the tweezers to kind of help me part and move the hair out of the way, but I do one behind the other, following the same grid line pattern, if that makes sense. And 
And to help y'all see what I'm doing a little bit better, I use one of my favorite methods where I just take the little wrapper from the wig cap and then I rip it in half and I just slide it under that lace so that you can see those grid lines a little bit better because it's a white surface. So you can see, especially when they're bleached, you can kind of see those grid lines way better when you slide that white paper under it. So as you can see, I'm still following that line all the way to the back. The good thing about manufactured lace is that they follow that same grid line all the way back. They're always perfect. They're always a straight line. It never misses. I promise y'all, I use this method every single time when I'm doing a middle part. And every time I pluck following the same grid line, it's always a perfect part. And to keep the hair flat and separated, I was wetting it all throughout the video just to make sure I can keep it on opposite sides. Yes, this part is a bit time consuming, but it is necessary when you want a perfect part down the middle. And as you see, I just keep parting as I go. That's why I said that initial part does not have to be super straight because as you pluck, that part is going to get straighter and straighter and you're going to continue to change that part along the way. Let me remind y'all that I did speed this video up. I'm not going super fast. I'm still taking my time. Even though I've been doing this for a while, I still take my time with the part especially. I just sped it up so that the video wouldn't be super long. So don't think you have to rush at all. You don't pluck all the way to the back of the closure because you do want to leave some space to be able to comb that hair over the tracks. As you can see, I did not pluck all the way to the back. I still left room to be able to comb some hair to the back. And the lighting do make the knots look a little over bleached, but rest assured they are not, okay? So once you get your part plucked and ready to go, it's time to pluck that hairline. Now, with my vendors and a lot of vendors nowadays, the closures and stuff, they usually come a little bit pre-plucked, but I like to pluck it just a little bit more, but not too much. So I start off by parting out this thin layer in the front, and then I comb the rest of it to the back. Once I parted out the amount that I wanted to, I grabbed my tweezers and on that slanted part, I just start to pluck. And this part I am moving pretty fast, y'all. I do move a little fast. You don't want to stay in the same spot because then you will risk balding the closure. So with the part, you stay in the same spot because you want that part to be crisp and you want that hair to be gone. But with the hairline, you want to part thin layers at a time pushing the rest back and then you want to pluck in a fast motion left to right or right to left however you want to do it but just move around when you pluck it I 
usually go about three to four layers back just to make it look a little bit more natural but mind you i'm not over plucking i i really do not like a severely over plucked wig because it just makes it ball way faster i know it'd be looking natural on the pictures and stuff but after that one or two wears your wig will really start balding And that's a little side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the difference as you can see that right side is more plucked than the left side even though it came pre-plucked it looks just a little bit more natural and i just repeat this step on the other side then i let the wig just air dry and i style accordingly this is the final result like, share, and subscribe if you found this video helpful and see y'all in the next one.